Hey all, in this video we are going to talk about classes in C++. So basically if you can recall what we did previously, um, we found that when the program growing and growing, we may have more functions. Okay, like this diagram, we may have more functions. And in order to um, solve it faster, easier, we may have a global data or global variables. We declare it so that all of the functions can refer to the global data or global variables and then the main program the program will work um, correctly okay this is our task but this is not a good practice because when the program grow and grow we found that it is very difficult to maintain it okay especially the functions and the um, the variables that we have declared declare in the global uh, part okay so in order to solve this <clears throat> we can change the way how we um, program okay especially uh, the functions we should know each of them clearly whether they have the same attributes or characteristic and then whether they share the same variables if yes then we can group them so let's say in our case we have six functions we found that the first two functions having same characteristic and then the third and the fifth functions are uh, third fourth fifth having same characteristic or same features then we can group them so with these, we can create member functions, meaning that we can group them <clears throat> and we call it as member functions. So in this case, we have two functions. And then the related data members, are related variables, will be named as data members. And all of these, when we combine them, we call it as one object. All right. So second diagrams, we refer to the three functions over here, group them as a member functions, <clears throat> and then we identify the variables which are related to these three functions. We group them as well into one object. And lastly, we have one function with uh, the data members and then we group them as one object. So this will create three objects with each of the objects that have their own data members and their own member functions. You will found that these data members are actually encapsulated encapsulated based on the object itself. So in this case, if you have um, same name for the variables, let's say integer num students number, uh, that is the variable names, okay? Integer students number. So you may have the, the data members here in the first object and the second object, third object. We can name it, okay? We can give the same name for all of these three objects. And compiler will not confuse. All right, so what is the encapsulations or encapsulated means that the data members or the variables will be hidden and um, it will not be accessed by other objects or other part of the programs. Okay, even though we have the same name, same variables name, it will not, um, it will not crash okay, in our program. So the whole concept uh, is called OOP, Object Oriented Programs, and then we name it as classes as well because um, from the diagram, it shows that this is one object. Each of the object having their own data members, having their own member functions. But in the real case, in the real case, usually we don't look for a single object. But um, when we apply it, when we do it, we will implement the whole class, a class. Okay. And in the actual developments, you must specify the behavior of the class uh, based on the member functions and then the data members as well. So let's say, let's say our program, original program is having this one. When we define it, we found that um, we may have one object with the data members itself and the functions, okay? But each of the functions may have their own characteristic or attributes. So when we call it in this program, in uh, program A, we may only use B and D functions, but still it is based on the same object, okay? Same classes, same classes. And when we program the next program, okay? When we go for the next program, we found that we only need function A, function C, function E but they are grouped in the same classes. Okay, so the easiest way to imagine this is like car. We have so many cars. Okay, what are the similar attributes we found that um, exit in every car? We found that all cars having different colors. So color could be one of the functions. Okay, and then wells probably, right? So we know that we are having four wells. Every car will be having, I'm talking about a mobile car, I'm not talking about a lorry or other type of vehicles, but usually car will be having four wells. That is the standard one. But the size of the wells are different. 
based on different car we have 16 inch 15 inch 17 inch 18 inch all right so the number the size of the well are different okay but cars itself still having uh, wells besides well we have horns we have um, staring okay so the design itself could be the attributes and then it could be different based on the objects so in this particular example our object is car okay and in order to go further uh, we have to first understand classes syntax so classes syntax is quite simple just type class and then the name of the class depends on the situations depends on what how you name it okay follow with the curly bracket open and close semicolons don't forget about semicolons then we will have two sections inside the class which is public and private private which means the data members any variable that you want to declare we put it under private sections and then any member functions means that any functions that we have declared we can put it under public sections okay and um, th this part is the variables declarations okay so in the public part we will have functions itself there are three types of functions one is called mutator mutator means that we are going to modify the value let's say the original item id value uh, is zero okay we are going to get from the input and then we are going to modify it so with that we call it as mutator okay and then the assessors means from our main functions or from other functions we are going to get that particular value okay this is what we call as assessors and the value won't change anymore in these functions we just want to get and retrieve the value we are not going to modify the value anymore that's why um, we have a return type and then we have the function name follow with constant con c o n s t to, to remind the programmer to tell the programmers that this is an assessor we are not going to change the value we just want to retrieve the values okay and then the last one is the constructor constructor means that we are going to reset the values okay and constructor will be having same name as our class name our class in this example is cash register so our constructor is cash register it will not crash okay the compiler we know that this is the constructor and in the constructor itself we are going to initial the value not reset okay but initial the value because in some of the cases we might want to initial a value so uh, in order to do that we have to do we have to create the constructor but not all of, not all of the compilers will force it okay if we do not create the constructor uh, most of the compiler we just reset all of this uh, not reset we will initial we will initiate um the data members into zero okay so this constructor is optional but to be to have good practice in programming uh, we should have a constructor so how to call it in the main functions in our main functions we have to call the name of the class okay so this is considered as one of the class and then define how many objects we want how many um yeah how many uh, in this case is cache register so how many cache register we want okay um if we define cr01 then you have to imagine that this is one cacher cr02 this is the second cacher and we may want to call the cacher itself we call the name the variable name and then we call the functions so in our case we have um clear we have eight item we have get total we have get counts so when we want to refer to the particular uh, to the particular functions we have to use the dot dot clear dot add item dot add item and so on right so let's try for the code and before you try for the code please download the cpp file i have uploaded in the intel uh, sorry in the itel uh, in order to proceed we will first understand try to understand the code it's quite simple actually uh, i know you, you can create it so um yeah we will first understand and then we will change it to class okay how to change it to class and then move the function to class base uh next we will change it to header file okay we will put it somewhere we will copy and paste the particular code to a header file it will totally disappear from our main program uh, from our cpp file okay let's try it hey all in order to continue for um, the coding part you must download the file from itel systems i have uploaded a file called i can't remember the file name i have uploaded a .cpp file please download um, we have the code very simple program later on we will change it to class base okay in this program 
it's quite um, simple where it consists only three variables items price and total and then we have a do while loop where this while loop will be um, continue continue to loop until invalid input has been inserted okay so every time when the user key in item price it will be captured store it temporarily and then the value will be total will be sum all right so after everything have been key in um, we will display the result total item and total price so let's compile and run all right let's say my first item okay then i can invalid data maybe a or b or c alphabet so what will happen is the system will capture we have insert three items one to three uh, this the last one is not an item eh? it, will, it will be excluded and then the last one is total price equal to 10 ringgit 30 cent um, yeah 10 ringgit 30 cent okay so this if if case if um, the key the input is valid then we will sum up the items Okay, now we are going to change this into um, classes. All right now, let's try to change um, the whole code to classes best, to object oriented best. If you refer to the slides, uh, the, the syntax are quite simple where we have to declare as class and then we have to give a name of class, then follow with the curly bracket and the semicolon. So, inside the class itself, we must have two sections what is public. Another one is uh, private. So over here, private means we are going to have data member. And then the public section, which means the members functions. Okay, and uh, if you can recall, if we found that we have constructor, we have mutator, and then we have assessor. Right, so now name of the class is up to you, uh, whatever name you give, as long as it is logic, acceptable, and so on. Um, since this program is like a cash registering system, so I call it as cash register, cash regular. Yeah, this is the name of my class. Okay, look at the data member first. We have three data members over here, uh, variables in our main program. So these are the data members we are going to copy and paste it in these private sections. Just cut and paste. Uh, just cut and paste it. All right. But over here, it's a place where we declare. We declare. Okay. Not initialize. Initialize should be under constructor. So what should we do is I copy and paste here. I remove the price in the constructor place in the constructor sections and then remove the data type okay because we already declare here we already declare here so constructor will be having um, exactly same name as the classes itself which is called cache register and then next all right so i copy and paste everything inside here so you found that now it works just fine so this is what we call as constructor and in our data member we don't need the initializations data members just um, define define all of these uh, variables okay while constructor is reset or clear i would say uh, reset not clear if you need to have a function clear function then um, you must define it separately so you can call it when it is needed all right so go back to our main code you found that these sections uh, what happened in this section is where we get the price we get the input price and then we update the total and then we update the items so basically we can copy and paste uh, for me i always cut and paste and then declare over here so over here we are going to return the data type as double and then um, let's say this is a function called get price okay 
So I copy and paste everything here. So with this, my functions will see out the item price and then store the price. So where is this variable? It's here, the price. And then it will update the price and total and then it will check whether it's fail or not, then it will update everything. So this particular mutator is going to change the value of two variables. One is items, another one is total. That's why we call it as mutator. Modify the values. All right, so how about assessor? Okay, most of the students do not know, do not understand why we need an assessor. If we go back to here, you will found that in our main program, we are going to see out the results of items. We are going to see out the results of total. So how to call these two variables? How to call the items, how to call the total variables from our classes. So this is what we call assessor. We want to assess, not assess. We want to assess the variables and then we pass it back to our main program. Okay, so in order to do that, we are going to uh, capture two variables. One is item, one is uh, total. Yeah, one is item, one is total. So we know that the item is declared as integer. So we are going to return as integer, get item, and then return item. That's all. We are going to get the item, and then we are going to return the items. And next is... Next is the total. So we are going to return the total. Uh, I just changed this to total. And then here, which is total. So now these two functions, we will get the item values in our classes and then return to the main program, as well as the total variables and then return it to our program. And always remember that um, put a constant here to differentiate between the mutator and the assessors so that the value won't change when it is passing back to our I main functions. Okay, so now, um, considerable done for the classes. We go back to the main functions. In order to call the class, what we should do is we should declare uh, the class. So our class is named as cash register. Okay, so over here, the variable is called, the data, data, data type is called cache register, sorry, the class type is called cache register. And then we have to give any name. Maybe I say this is cache register 01, the first machine. Okay, so I name it as CR01. So when I want to call the function for the first machine or first cacher, then I will use CR01 dot, okay, it will, list, it will list three functions for you, which you want to call, okay? So we call the price and then over here, it will call the classes, uh, the functions, the functions from here. Okay, and then it will return um, the variables. And over here, we will get CR01 also dot get item. And over here, we will get um, get total. Right now we can compile and run. Compile and run. It shows us that get price must return the value. Okay, there is a there is a, a mistake here, and then the return convert line nineteen and line twenty six. Line nineteen and line twenty six. Okay, line twenty six total is double. Total is double. Okay, it's my mistake. Total is double. Correct. And then line 19. We modified the value with double get price. Okay, now we have to decide uh, whether we should return any value or not. In this case, we will update the total. We will update the item. So we don't need to return any value. All right, we don't need to return any value. So we can just put void. Since we don't pass the variables into back to the main function or to any places. So we don't need to return. Okay, we are passing, we are getting the price variables and then we update the total price in our class and also we update the item in our class as well so we don't have to return to the main functions 
Okay, compile and run again. All right, so now test uh, with any value. Right, oops. Oh, sorry, I have forgotten to close the original one, the, the previous one. So we rerun again. Right, so we have four items registered, and then the total price is adding it 10 cent. Is that correct? 10, correct? 4, 5, 8. Okay, correct. So this is how we use um, classes. We declare classes, all right? And you may found that Visual Studio have highlighted this, and it will say that uh, constructor plus two overloaded. Uh, actually, which means that constructor in this case is not necessary, and Visual Studio will create the constructor itself. Okay, so this is depends on uh, compiler itself. Some of the compiler must have uh, the constructor, must declare the constructor. Some compiler may not declare the constructor because it is optional. Okay, so back to the main program. Back to the main program, besides running this code, we also can modify it so that um, we can have two cache register machine or two cacher. Okay, for two cachers. Let's say I give a very simple one. Uh, um, this one, I just remove it. Okay, I declare as two cacher, zero, two. All right, so the first cacher get the price. Okay, maybe for uh, four times or five times. All right, and then the second cashier we have four times. Okay, and then oh, I will display the results. Okay, so I will display the results. Total items for cashier one. Total prices for cashier one. And then item for cashier two. Change all of these to two, 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 one, one. Okay, correct. That should work. We compile and run and see whether there is any error. Right, uh, this is cashier one, five times. So, okay, this is the second cashier. I separated it with a bigger number. Or oh, four times, four times. All right, so we have found that the total items for CR1, which is cashier one, is five items one, two, three, four, five. Again, we have seven ringgits, 90 cent. I'm not sure whether it's correct or not. And then the second cashier, we have four, four inputs, sum up everything. And then we have 20 ringgits. Uh, check whether it's correct or not. Uh, 11, 17, 18, 20. Yeah. So the second cashier based on this, the first cashier based on this. All right. So it's up to you how to program it, but um, this is how we create the classes. And if you want to create a more completed system, then you may. Uh, add on the cashier based on user input and then you may have uh, if else statements like um, for every loop every loop while loop you capture whether this price from uh, cashier one or cashier two or cashier three and then you store it temporarily store it until you close the systems uh, you have an if, 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 if else statements to close it then we can know okay cashier one what is this cashier two what is this okay instead of using a for loop Right, in this section, we are going to um, remove the classes. We have declared the classes clearly. And um, we are going to maintain the main program. Yeah, we just move the class to other file. So the first thing we have to do is we have to create a header file. Go to the file menu, go to the new, and then choose file. So we have to select header file in our virtual Visual C++ uh, sections or directory. Okay, don't go for general. Eh? 
it is only available in Visual C++ and then select the header file, click open. You will found that there is a, a pragma once code over here, ignore it. Okay, um, what you should do is we should go back to our CPP file, cut everything, I mean uh, the, the classes, okay, cut all of the code for the classes and only maintain this. All right, then save it. We go back to um, the header file. Okay, leave at least two lines uh, at the top part and then one line at the bottom. All right, and then paste it. So now our classes file is here. What we should do next is we should um, change the info to this one. Hashtag if and def. And then the name of the uh, classes. Usually I will put name of the classes with all capital letter and then underscore hatch. Okay, next line is hashtag define the name of the classes with underscore hatch. Okay, two lines. And then at the back, which is the most bottom part, we have to include hashtag NF. So what is this? This will tell the compiler that this header file only need to be placed once. Okay, once you have inserted these three codes, then save it. All right, save it in the same directory as where your CPP file or EXE file located, and then name it. Name it. Usually, I will name it based on um, the class name. So, like cache uh, register, register. Okay, you don't have to type hatch or whatever. It will create it itself. All right, and then click save. Okay, so C cache uh, cache register. Sorry, C A has hatch register. Okay. Then go back to my console um, applications or my CPP file. You will found that here cache register cannot be found. Okay, and this is a big error it said. So next, I want to include the header file with this double quote. Okay, so what is the header file name? Our header file name is cache register dot hatch. Well, cache c a s h r e g dot hatch. So once you have insert this or key in this you will found that this one changed it to green, meaning that the compiler have successfully identified the header file and then this will work. All right, so save this, compile and run. So we found that it works successfully. Uh, I just simply key in any value. Eh? You also can do that. Okay, so we have five items for the first cashier, four items for the second cashier. And then first uh, total price is five ringgit fifty cent. The second one is four ringgit forty cent. Okay, based on the input. So this is how we call a header file, and then um, we use it in our program. So now, now this header file, it's here. The content is here. You may modify um, the functions. You may update everything, and then back to your here, back to the main program. You found that you can just call them, simply call them. So this is what happened with the uh, f stream string dot uh, string header file and then cc type header file okay so programmers already created the content and then put it in the header file so that everyone can use it okay programmers can simply call it right so that's all about um, classes uh, in some of the reference book or exercise you may found that uh, programmers don't declare their classes functions like what I did Okay, they don't put it here, um, the complete functions. What they did, they put it at the bottom of the main program. Um, for an example, I just copy this one and then later I will paste it at the bottom part. Okay, so in the classes itself, instead of declaring like this, they remove the content. And also here, they just remove the content of the function. Okay, so. On top of the program, we only have the member functions, the declarations of the member functions. Okay, and then the data members itself as well. And the content, they will put it at the bottom after the main program. After return zero, close the curly bracket, and then they put it here. But you will found that if you paste everything here, you will have an errors. Why? Because the compiler does not know whether these functions belong to who, belong to where. Okay, so in order to solve this, what you should do is just type the code. 
like this the class name follow with double dot okay uh, for every functions so this will tell the compiler that this get price functions belong to the class called cash register okay just copy and paste and then wait for a while compiler check everything no error compile and run so we found that it works as well so it's up to you um, which is convenience for you whether you want to declare the function on top uh, before the in main the main program or at the bottom of the main program uh, or you want to create a header file for your function and then later on you can call them so your main program won't uh, look that messy all right so that's all for yeah that's all for uh, this chapter thank you very much and thank you for watching this video